Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about a concept named schedule of changes in working capital. Preparation of schedule of changes in working capital is a requirement for preparing funds flow statement. Perhaps this is the first step in preparing funds flow statement. This is a small introduction about me. Marketing, accounting and financial management are the areas of my specialization in teaching and research. Let's look at the problem. You are asked to compile a statement of working capital from the following details. You are given with the particulars, I mean extracts from the balance sheets of a company or a business enterprise for two years. One is on 1-1-1999, that means it is for the year 1998 and the other set of details are given for the year ended on 31-12-1999. So over here, you have to look at this as the previous year and the other data for 1999 as the data related to the current year. What is working capital? It is the amount of capital required for meeting out the day-to-day -day expenses of an organization. It is calculated with the formulae. Current assets minus current liabilities will give you working capital. So excess of current assets over current liability is nothing but working capital. Fund, the meaning of fund, fund refers to cash or cash equivalents or working capital. That's the very reason why we make an attempt to calculate whatever the changes taken place in the amount of working capital in two periods of time. So from the list of items given here, as extracts from the balance sheet of a business enterprise. To prepare schedule of changes in working capital, you need to identify the list of current assets and current liabilities. That's the first step. Have a look at the details here. 8% debentures, that's a long-term liability or a non-current liability. It will not be considered in the schedule of changes in working capital. The second one is outstanding rent. That's nothing but a current liability, it should be considered. Cash in hand, cash at bank, these two are current assets, we have to consider it here. Accounts payable is also a current liability, it will be considered in our schedule of changes in working capital. Machinery is a, a non-current asset, that's a fixed asset. Then accounts receivable, it's a current asset. Prepaid commission, since you have paid an expenditure in advance, it is also a current asset. Inventory is nothing but stock, current asset. Share premium, it will not come in the schedule of changes in working capital. It is uh, uh, It should be written under capitals and reserves in uh, our balance sheet. So it is a part of uh, the uh, capital and reserves there. Equity share capital, again, it's very clearly given it is capital. It will not come in schedule of changes in working capital. So we have identified the list like outstanding rent, cash in hand, cash at bank, accounts payable, accounts receivable, prepaid commission, inventories. These items are to be considered here in the schedule of changes in working capital. Now, let us have a discussion over a small formulae that will help you to understand how the data are recorded in the schedule of changes in working capital. See, when there is an increase in current asset, when current asset increases, obviously you find increase in working capital. Suppose, for example, if value of stock, comparing that of previous year, if it increases in its value in the current year, obviously the working capital per current year will be increased. The same rule is applicable for the increase in all current assets. Then what about the opposite effect? If there is a decrease in current asset, 
it leads to decrease in working capital. These are all the two formulae. Increase in current asset leads to increase in working capital. Decrease in current asset leads to decrease in working capital. Then what about the liabilities, current liabilities? This is the third formula here. Increase in current liability leads to decrease in working capital. How it is? See, for example, in a given situation, current assets of a concern is 1 lakh. Current liability is 50,000. Now you find increase only in an item of a current liability, that is creditor. There is an increase of 5,000 rupees in creditor. Therefore, the total of current liability becomes 55,000. 1 lakh minus 55,000, the working capital will become only 45,000. So what is the impact of increase in a current liability? If current liability increases, working capital is going to decrease. And what about the decrease in current liability? The opposite effect, working capital is going to increase. So let me sum up the four formulae first. Increase in current assets leads to increase in working capital. Decrease in current asset leads to decrease in working capital. And when you come to current liability, increase in current liability leads to opposite effect, decrease in working capital, whereas decrease in current liability leads to increase in working capital. You need to be very clear with this four formulae. Now let's have a look at the schedule of changes in working capital prepared. This is the structure of the schedule of changes in working capital. Our statement of working capital, particulars, last year figures, current year figures and you have a broader column for changes in working capital. One, one sub column is for increase and the other sub column is for a decrease in working capital. Let's first arrange a list of current assets we identified from the balance sheet or you know extracts of the balance sheet given in the problem. Cash in hand, it was 4000 rupees last year but this year it has become 8000. So increase in current asset leads to increase in working capital, formula 1. Then cash at bank, 12,000 rupees in the last year. This year it has become 15,000 rupees. So increase in current asset leads to increase in working capital. Again you apply formula 1. Then accounts receivable, 30,000 it has become 34,000. The same formula 1 has been applied here. Prepaid commission. It was 4,000, the current year it is 0. That means current asset has come down. Formula 2, decrease in current asset leads to decrease in working capital. Inventories, 22,000, now it is 27,000. Apply formula 1 and so that you come to know 5,000 rupees increase in working capital. And you sum up, you know, the total of uh, current assets for the previous year and current assets for the current year, give character A. Then current liabilities. There are two current liabilities out of the seven items we identified. Five were current assets. Now the two are uh, treated as current liabilities. Fine. Outstanding rent. Increase in current liability. Look at the three and four formulae. You know from what I said. Increase in current liability leads to decrease in working capital. And here in current, I mean accounts payable. Accounts payable is nothing but a combination of uh, creditors and bills payable and similarly accounts receivable is a combination of debtors and bills receivable please understand this point and accounts payable it was 20,000 in the last year now it has become 26,000 so you find an increase of 6,000 rupees in its value increase in the current liability leads to decrease in working capital again you sum up the values of current liabilities for the year separately for 98 it is 28,000 for 99, it is 38,000. So total is given with the character B. As we know, working capital is nothing but current assets minus current liabilities. You apply the formula. 72,000 minus 28,000, it is 44,000 working capital for 98. It is 46,000 working capital for 99. Now, you can also do one thing, you can sum up these increased figures and you know write, you know, write the total here. And decrease figures, you know, you total them and write it over here. You understand? And that is also another way. And now look at, you know, this point is very simple. The working capital for 98 was 44,000. In 99, it has become 46,000. Obviously, you find 2,000 rupees increase in working capital. And that is what 
see the increase in working capital is 16,000. If you sum up these figures, the tickery figures, it would be only 14,000. If you write the total here, here it would have become 16,000 and here it is 14,000. So 16,000 increase you find in working capital, whereas decrease in working capital you notice only 14,000. So increase is 2,000 rupees more than that of decrease in working capital. Therefore, the result is what? Increase in working capital of 2,000 rupees we evidence in the year 1999 for this business comparing its data for the year 1998. So this is what about schedule of changes in working capital. Very easy. You need to mem you know be clear with the structure of the schedule of changes in working capital. And you should also recall the four formulae which I explained in the beginning of this video. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, you give a like and do subscribe my channel as well. Thanks for watching.